Hi everyone, welcome back to Engine Tuner and our latest video. Now, in my experience, everybody has a favourite generation of Skyline GTR. When I was growing up, many years ago, my favourite was this, the R33. I don't know what it was, it was something about the curves, something about the presence, and for me, from the back, with those iconic four ring tail lights. It just looked phenomenal. And this is one of the best R33s that I've certainly ever come across. It belongs to Christian, my very good friend. It's a car we featured a few times actually, and Christian and the car came with us to the Nürburgring on last year's trip. And the car was driven by Misha around the ring. So externally, it's very standard, and actually that's one of the things that I love most about it. It's as standard as a Skyline GTR can look anyway. So you've got the Nismo front air intakes for the intercooler, very cool. Um, around the back, you have a carbon blade and adjustable gurney flap thing here. Again, very cool, but apart from that, there's not an awful lot going on on the outside. Um, the wheels are really special, so they're uh, Volk Racing CE28 wheels, very, very light. And if Max just zooms in a sec, you can see one of the really cool things about this car, and one of the reasons why I love it. It's got R35 GTR brakes, which were made by Brembo, and provide just phenomenal stopping power. So the fronts are six piston. I think the discs are 370 millimeters. So you can just about squeeze them behind an 18 inch wheel. And in my view, on a JDM car, especially a, a Skyline GTR, you don't want to go bigger than 18. Um, and they, they look really striking against the black wheel and the silver paint. Really love them. Inside the car, we're working on it at the moment, so there's a few bits and bobs in there. But inside the car, it's very stock. Stock seats, stock dash. Uh, it's a really comfortable car, actually. It's not hardcore, like some Skyline GTRs are. It's really comfortable to drive. The clutch is very simple. It's not snatchy. I mean, the gearbox is lovely. It's really, really nice. So, mechanically, it's got blitz coilover suspension which costs an absolute fortune very cool stuff I think it's got uprated anti-roll bars and a few other bits and bobs but really it's the engine that's worth talking about in a bit more detail on the car so when Christian got the car it had the 2.6 litre bottom end and it had a simply gigantic turbo. I think it was a Greddy T88, just like a proper truck turbo. And I remember when I first drove it, thinking that, I knew it was gonna be a bit of a 90s experience, but I wasn't ready for quite what happened, which was that nothing happened. You put your foot down, nothing. You wait a bit longer. I had a Sierra Cosworth like this. You wait a bit longer, nothing. Any minute now, I'm going to go down the road like an absolute Exocet missile. Nothing. And then about five and a half thousand revs, everything happened all at once. And you absolutely shot down the road. It was time to change gear. It was exhilarating, but also very old school. Um, and so when Christian was thinking about what he wanted to do to it and how we could modernise it, changing the turbo setup was one of the obvious uh, candidates for an upgrade. So when it went to the ring last year, the car had been treated already to a Garrett G35 1050, a Walton Motorsport manifold, external wastegate, a Link ECU, um, uh, an up uprated trigger kit for the cams and the crank. And it was an absolute flyer. And not only that, um, when the car was being worked on last year, we discovered that actually the engine wasn't quite as healthy as we wanted it to be. And there was no point bolting on that big blower, only for it to um, grenade itself somewhere. So, particularly if it was going to go to the ring and be used properly. So, 
Christian decided to bite the bullet. He happened to be visiting Australia, as you do, and uh, he went in to see our friends at Nitto Performance and uh, acquired from them a 2.8-litre uh, stroker kit. I can't remember now whether he smuggled it in his luggage, which is why I've not used his surname, you know, just in case it's incriminating, but I think he probably posted it. But anyway, it was posted, came back here to Engine Tuna headquarters in Plymouth, and the guys in our engineering section uh, built it up, uh, fitted, fitted it to the car, and we, we ran it in. Um, running in this car was fantastic, a uh, real pleasure. The noises it makes, the responsiveness of that Garrett turbo, and the extra torque you get from a bigger bottom end. Absolutely phenomenal. Um, anyway, fast forward to the ring, July last year, scorching hot. The car had a couple of niggly things which weren't its fault. It had a fault, it found out we, it had a sort of faulty wideband lambda sensor, so um, that was soon replaced. But having driven the car, uh, Christian felt that he wanted a bit more response, a bit more low down response from, from that engine. And so he opted to change the G35 1050 for a G30 900. So both the exhaust side and the intake side are a tiny bit smaller. And that has now been fitted to the car. We also uh, discovered that, particularly in the at the ring, where not only were the ambient temperatures really hot, it was that scorching period in the summer, if you remember, it was like 35 degrees. The car's been driven hard in, that, in those conditions. It was getting a bit hot, not worryingly hot but just hotter than you want with a performance car and heat as I've said so many times is the enemy of a performance car so um, we had the manifold the wastegate uh, coated um, with the professional uh, kind of foam based metallic coating um, and, and that has really helped so where are we with this car it's um it's it's been mapped uh, provisionally so it's running a base map at the moment it will be mapped for um, uh, regular petrol very, very shortly. And because Christian lives in the US where the e E85 is more available at the pumps and he wants the option of potentially importing it to the US, we will, uh, we will uh, fit a flex fuel sensor, and may already be on, I can't recall, map it for E85 so that he can have all that extra power, all that extra torque from the pump. It's fantastic. I wish we had that over here. Uh, it's, yeah, they're really spoiled. Anyway, um, we'll do a, a more detailed video and we'll take it for a drive and we'll show you what it's like. But trust me, the thing is an absolute monster. On the previous setup, I think it ran something like 740 brake horsepower. And bear in mind that this uh, still runs the standard five-speed gearbox. Take note, Subaru, this is how you build a five-speed gearbox. Uh, it's got a a twin plate clutch of course and a, f and a few other upgrades but uh, aside from that the drivetrain is pretty stock it's stock drive shafts stock diffs it's phenomenal the way they put these cars together massively over engineered from the factory on purpose of course because they knew full well despite the gentleman's agreement at 286 horsepower that very few owners were going to keep it at that level um, so it would be fascinating to see how the how the power delivery differs with the slightly smaller turbocharger. I mean, we'll, we should see uh, full boost sooner in the rev range. Uh, with E85, we should see more torque than the, the old turbo made. Um, and I can't wait to, <laughs> to bring it home and look after it for Christian again. Uh, it's a phenomenal thing. We're very spoiled here at Engine Tuner. We see and look after and build some of the best cars, modified cars, in the scene if you ask me and we'll see you on the next one take care bye